to Durban now, where South Africa's heritage and culture is on display at this year's tourism in Daba. Let's cross live now to ENCA anchor Eleni Jokas, who is at the Durban International Convention Center. Eleni, of course, a big draw card we get to play in the tourism industry is our wildlife. Even Justin Bieber tweeted of his uh, safari <laughs> experience. <laughs> Absolutely. So it is all about the wildlife in South Africa. And what's fascinating to note is that our national parks last year actually attracted 4.9 million tourists. And around 80% of those are actually domestic tourists. So we rely heavily on domestic tourism when it comes to our national parks. Joining us now is Glenn Phillips. He is a marketing executive at Sand Parks. And give us a little bit more detail about what exact trends are playing out. So 80% are domestic tourists so you're not relying that much on the foreign tourists right now are you planning to change this ratio absolutely not i think we always want to keep a 80 20 ratio domestic market is our bread and butter um, it's a pilgrimage for south africans it's their cultural and natural heritage and we want to maintain that but we also want the foreign market to come and experience our natural heritage in our country and south african national parks is uh, this custodian of those beautiful areas for the world not just for south africa okay so glenn the reality is that it costs around a billion rand to keep conservation going to keep the national parks going every single year you have a massive deficit because only around 50 percent of that money comes through from the tourism market what challenges are you going to face going forward? Essentially, uh, currently we break even. We have to break even every year. Um, of our budget, uh, our operational budget, um, we make uh, 50, out of the tourism side, 50% goes to conservation initiatives. But in total, we break even and meet the cost of the 1 billion. However, over the next 10 years, if we take the last five years' costs and revenue and we extrapolate over the next 10 years, we will have a 400 million rand deficit by 2022. So we've launched a new strategy which uh, looks uh, at the strategy there in the future into 2022 and looks at diversifying our product offering, looking at new opportunities not only within our national parks but outside to generate the revenue re uh, needed to look after the, our natural heritage. But Glenn, the reality is that the international tourists spend a lot more money because they stay a lot longer. Surely you'd want to increase um, you know, the international guys that come to South Africa because they are the ones with the big money. Um, they're on the uh, actual average spend per tourist, yes, that, that is true. Um, and a lot of them will use ancillary services like the restaurants and the game drafts and that. So the average spend is high. However, the South African market comes on a more regular basis. Um, uh, most, of, most of the South Africans that come on a regular basis are two to three times a year to our parks. And the camping community will stay for a week at a time. Uh, they don't want to set up uh, for one night to leave again. Um, and a lot of our parks are in rural destinations, away from the main centres, so people have to travel there and get there, um, and that costs their money. So it's a, it's a good market for us, and uh, we, keep, we need it desperately, the domestic market. We'll keep it. Okay, so Sand Parks also has interesting uh, changes in the demographic mix in terms of the people that are coming to our national parks, which means that we're starting to become more, far more inclusive by way of domestic tourism. Absolutely. I think uh, a key to any country's domestic market is that everybody must participate. Um, due to various histories uh, of national parks, um, the demographics, demographics have always been white. Um, it has changed over the last uh, 10 years or so, and currently uh, we've managed to uh, achieve 25.5% of the domestic market visitors are now black visitors. Um, unfortunately, under 10% are overnight visitors, um, and we need to change that now. But we believe coming in for a day visit experience, having a picnic, seeing the park will then lead you to come uh, and stay overnight with your family, or attending a conference paid for by your business will enable you to say, this is a wonderful place, I'm going to come with my family. The reality is that we are going to lose tourism if we don't protect our big five. And of course, I'm alluding to the rhino. We know that there's a massive problem there, losing almost 300 rhinos so far this year. Glenn, how much money are you spending on this? Is it a worry right now? Because the numbers are far, far higher than the initial targets that we saw coming through from sand parks earlier this year. Absolutely. As a, a conservation is a costly business. Um, and, uh, of course, the scourge of rhino poaching now is increasing their cost uh, tremendously. Uh, the government is coming to the party and giving us additional funding for both uh, human resources as well as equipment. And we need high-tech equipment. Uh, we need more air support, and that's coming at a high cost. Uh, it's not within our budgets, but we are getting the support, the additional funding for those specific initiatives because it is a very critical situation for the country. With regards to initiatives going forward and how it's going to increase your spend, we know that by 2020 or so, your uh, overall cost should rise to around 1.4 billion rand per year. Surely it's going to be much higher than this if we don't see uh, the violence stopping against the rhino. 
Uh, absolutely, it's going to be very expensive. I think that we are, with a strategy changing um, from what we were, the way we were doing anti-poaching in, the, in uh, national parks and generally in the country, is changing now to a, a far more structured approach in terms of dealing with incursions from across uh, the border in Mozambique and dealing with the issue around the, the communities in those areas to understand what the issues are, intelligence and that type of thing. But that comes at a cost. But at the end of the day, it's very true that if... Uh, if uh, we don't protect our, co our, cons our conservation areas, our protected areas, then we'll lose the tourism in those areas as well. So looking after the rhino is just one element. We, uh, there's other species, there's uh, both fauna and flora we have to look after. So that's key to look after all of it. Fantastic, Glenn. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us uh, on Only ENCA. Great to have you uh, here at the Tourism in Darba 2013. And of course, that was uh, Glenn Phillips. He is marketing executive at Sandparks. Just breaking down those numbers for us and very exciting because the demographics are changing. 25% of the people that visit Sandparks every year are now uh, African people, which is fantastic news. We're starting to see that changing extensively. Well, it's back to you. News that moves. ENCA.com.